Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, normally, I would start this lesson with a demonstration. Um, I've got what's called a ballistic pendulum, and it shoots this metal ball of, uh, halfway across the short length of the room. Uh, and it's a great experiment. But I took a video of it, and it doesn't show up. So, so it goes. Okay? we got to deal with what we got. And I've got a tennis ball, and I can throw it, and it's... Let's... Not as good. I'm not very fond of pandemics. So it goes. Now, what we're looking at is what we call projectile motion. Now, a projectile is just any object that is flying through the air under the influence of gravity alone. So, a jet airplane, not going through projectile motion because it's got engines. Um, birds, not going through projectile motion because they've got wings, all right? Uh, you think of uh, football, baseball, soccer ball, anything that flies through the air like that is going through projectile motion, okay? Now, I tried to demonstrate just the ball going, starting in a horizontal direction, like so, okay? So, where's my tennis ball? Here we go. We have a tennis ball, it doesn't show up. All right, there's my tennis ball. Okay, and if we follow the path of this ball, if you rewind the video, you might see just a smidge of this kind of motion. Now, this is projectile motion, okay? Um, this motion right here. Now, we'll notice it's definitely two-dimensional if we put a Cartesian coordinate axis on this ball. X and Y taking conventional directions, right? Positive, negative, positive, and negative. Obviously, this is moving in two dimensions. So we are going to need vectors to analyze the motion of this object. Well, first off, <clears throat> it's going to start with an initial velocity in the horizontal direction. We're going to have to label that as a vector because all of our vectors are, oh, sorry, all of our quantities are directional in this case, right? Now. Put yourself in the position of looking at this ball flying through different angles. We started with the horizontal view of it, and you should have seen something like so. Okay? Um, but what would you see if you were standing over here, looking at it like this from a distance? Well, that's hard to demonstrate because it's just a video and I've only got this much space to work with, okay? But if you were to see it, all right, if you were to see me throw it like this, you wouldn't see the curve of the motion at all. All you would see is the ball just going like that, right? Um, if your depth perception were, like I said, you were far enough that your depth perception didn't really come into play, you would see the ball that, which it looks like it's just an object falling in one dimension at that point. So, the person standing here, here's the person, this person standing here, what they see of the motion is just an object going straight down like so which we know how to analyze an object going straight down like that. We've already done that in our one-dimensional motion chapter, okay? Now, we're gonna have another person who is somehow up above, looking down on the object in its motion like so, okay? <coughs> how to draw that person. Uh, 
I guess. So he's just kind of floating over there, watching it. Now, what does he see? He sees an object, right? He sees an object also going in just a straight line. If this is the that motion, okay, that's what he sees. He sees the object is moving like so. And we can see that these are basically kind of x and y values here. Now, what's nice is if we can break this up and look at it from his view and also from his view, then we can determine just kind of what's happening here. And we can use our one-dimensional motion kinematics to analyze this situation. We'll break it up and look what's happening in the x direction. In the x direction, we can use any of our one-dimensional equations that we want to to analyze it. So, we've got our basic equation there. Let's say that v x is e of x plus acceleration times time. We've also got x is x naught plus e naught x c plus one half ax c squared, and then we've got v x squared is equal to e naught x squared plus two ax. minus x naught. Now, notice that we've got to put these in here because this is analyzing what is happening in the x direction of the motion. For the y direction, we can do the same thing, but we'll have to write these equations from the perspective of the person get, watching it in the y direction. So we can choose from either one of these sets of equations to analyze the motion one dimension at a time. Now, <coughs> there's something nice about this, because we know the acceleration in the y direction. What is the acceleration in the y direction? It's gravity that's accelerating it, so it's the acceleration due to gravity. So I can replace all of these a sub y's here with g's. Now, what's going to be even nicer about this is what's going on in the x direction. Okay? As it is moving through the air, what is there to accelerate it in the x direction? Is there anything pushing it to make it go faster in the x direction? Now, we're assuming air resistance is negligible. So there's nothing pushing against it in this case. And there's nothing pushing it. After it leaves my hand, there's nothing pushing it to make it go faster anymore. So what is its acceleration in the x direction? There is none. Its acceleration is zero in the x direction, which is very convenient. Because if that is zero, and that is zero, and that is all zero. Well, let's look at what we have left over. Um, well, we've still got all of that there, which is fine. Vx is equal to v naught x. It's got a constant velocity. I can move there. Uh, this right here is just, well, what we have up there. 
And this right here is essentially a restatement of what we've got there. The velocity in the x direction is constant. So what it breaks down to is that in the x direction, we only have one equation that we need to worry about. And that is essentially some form of this. We can simplify this if we just choose x naught to be 0. And in the x direction, we've got this right here x equals the average velocity times the time. Well, even simpler still, the average velocity, if it's a constant velocity, the velocity at all times is constant. So the initial instantaneous velocity is the average velocity. All we have is x equals v naught times t. We don't get to do such a thing with the y direction. The y direction does have an acceleration, so all of these equations are go for the y direction. But in the x direction, we really only have one thing to worry about. Now we're going to use these equations together to analyze this motion. Okay. Now, one thing to think about, and this is really key to all of it, what is the thing that connects all of these equations? All of the equations in the y direction and, well, all of our equations in the x direction. What is the one thing that connects them? Take a second, think about it. Pause if you need to, because it's coming. It's time, right? Time is the one thing they have in common. That time here is that time there. Right? All of those are the same time. It will take the same amount of time to drop to a certain point as it will to take to move to that point in the horizontal direction. So that is going to be key to um, analyzing the motion of a projectile that is uh, fired horizontally. Um, the end.